Week in Review. And this is a review on the news of the week. It's Sunday, October 11th, 2020 at 11 a.m. And thank you for joining me, Survival Preparedness for Beginners, for your weekly news review. Now, we did change the time from 11, from 8 to 11 a.m. Uh, this way here that other people could uh, watch when this first came out. I did your request for that, so that's why I moved the time. So thank you for joining me, and I do really do appreciate it. So let's get going on the news, because there's a lot to cover here, and I don't want this to be a 30, 40 minute video. Okay, fun fact of the day. I like to start off with the fun fact of the day. Uh, just kind of makes it a little bit easier to get into all the other BS we're gonna talk about. So why is Greece first in the Olympic parade? Traditionally, starting at the 1928 Summer Olympics, Greece enters first because of its historical status as the beginner of the Olympics. Okay, so they really started the whole Olympics, you know, it was kind of based off the Greeks. While the host nation marches in last. In 2004 Summer Olympics in Athens, the Greek flag led the parade into the building while the Greek team marched in last because they were the host nation. Now this this past week we did lose a couple of uh, famous musicians. Um, one I'm sure you all knew, um, Eddie Van Halen from Van Halen. Uh, he did pass away this week. Um, he was born on January 26, 1955. He was a Dutch American musician, songwriter, producer, and inventor. I didn't know he was an inventor, but hey, Go get him. I know he was one mean guitarist. He was the main songwriter and lead guitarist for the American rock band Van Halen, which he co-founded in 1972 with his brother, drummer Alex Van Halen, bassist Mark Stone, and singer David Lee Roth. He was... If you guys don't know who Eddie Van Halen is, go on YouTube and um, search for Van Halen and watch some of the videos. He was an amazing guitarist. Eddie Van Halen was 65. He was died on October 6th, 2020 this year. He lived in Santa Monica, California, and he passed away from throat cancer. Another person that passed away, another musician, uh, John Nash. He was born August 19th, 1940. He was an American singer-songwriter, best known in the United States for his 1972 hit, I Can See Clearly Now. Do we all remember that one? Are we dating people? Or are there people out there who are going to have to Google that one? Because they never heard of it. <laughs> Primary, a reggae and pop singer, he was one of the first non-Jamaican artists to record reggae music in Kingston. Johnny Nash was 80 years old. He also died on October 6, 2020. He was a, lived in Houston, and his death was natural causes. Now we all know with everything that's been going on and everything with the president, uh, in and out of the hospital and all this kind of stuff, going for rides and, and everything, um, we're going to try to keep this non-biased, and I'm just going to try to tell you a little bit about what's in the news, okay? Uh, Two-thirds of Americans say President Donald Trump handled the risk of the coronavirus infections to others around him irresponsibly, according to a poll in the days following the announcement that the president had contracted the virus that basically put everybody else, you know, in jeopardy and that everybody, millions of people every day deal with this. With Trump hospitalized at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center, 69% of Americans said they trusted little of what they heard from the White House about the president's health, and only 12% saying they trusted all of it. I don't know how much I trust, but you just don't know what to believe anymore. Now, this was quite interesting, and I found this out. Um, Donald Trump's you know, erratic and reckless behavior in the last 24 hours has opened up a riff in the Trump's family over how to rein in the out-of-control president, according to two Republicans briefed on the family conversation. Sources said Donald Trump Jr. is deeply upset by his father's decision to drive around Walter Reed National Medical 
Center last night with members of the Secret Service while he was infected with COVID-19. John Jr. thinks Trump is acting crazy. One of the sources told. The stunt outraged medical experts, including an attending physician at the Walter Reed Medical Center. According to sources, John Jr. has told his friends that he is tired. He's tried, excuse me, he's tried lobbying Ivanka Trump, Eric Trump, and Jerry Kushner to convince the president he needs to stop acting unstable. Don Jr. has said he wants to stage an intervention, but Jared and Ivanka keep telling Trump how great he is doing. A source said Don Jr is said to be reluctant to confront his father alone. So he's scared. Don said, quote, I'm not going to be the only one to tell him he's acting crazy. Somebody should. As the world comes to grips on Friday with uh, Donald Trump and the, you know, the coronavirus infection, you know, <clears throat> You get the Secret Service and everything else that is the ones that actually, you know, watch over the president and make sure the president stays safe. They are not very happy. The Washington Post did report. Um, they're kind of uh, really complaining about how irresponsible and everything else um, that he has been around them and everything because, you know, they have to worry about catching this thing too. You know, they wear a mask and everything. Uh, two days later, Trump, you know, he... Thought it'd be a good idea to go for a, quote, little joy ride, waving at his fans despite his ailment, seemingly putting agents in his hermetically sealed vehicle at greater risk. The Secret Service was once again not impressed. And then when the tweet started on Monday, you know, uh, I will be leaving the great Walter Reed Medical Center today at 6.30 p.m., President Trump tweeted this on October 5th at 2.37 p.m. Don't be afraid of COVID. Don't let it dominate your life. We have developed under the Trump administration some really great drugs and knowledge. I feel better than I did 20 years ago. Maybe it was Geritol. Now the president, Joe Biden, responded at 5.26 p.m. on the same date. Now the President Trump is busy tweeting campaign messages. I would ask him to do this. Listen to the scientists, support masks, and support mask mandate nationwide. Now, we're, you know, all this stuff is going on in the White House where, you know, we'd want to try to make sure that we keep everything clean. Uh, the coronavirus outbreak has infected 34 people as of the time that I am doing this. Uh, White House staffers and others in contact. In the recent days, according to an internal government memo that basically said the disease has spread among more people than previously known in the seat of American government. Dated Wednesday and obtained by ABC News, the memo was distributed among senior leaderships at FEMA, a branch of the Department of Homeland Security, and the agency responsible for managing and controlling national response to the public health disaster. Now you have, let's just read off some of the positions and stuff that have been affected. I'm going to do them all, just a few of the main ones. As of course, you know, you got the president, the first lady, the White House press secretary, the aide to the president, the White House principal assistant press secretary, the White House assistant press secretary, assistant to the president, uh, the Trump campaign manager, the former counsel to the president, and one, two, three, four, on this sheet here, we got four senators and... The RNC chairwoman. Maybe if everybody would have just wore a mask and did a little social distancing, they wouldn't be in that boat. New York stocks took a dive. You know, after, you know, Tuesday afternoon, a principal, President Donald Trump said he ordered an end to the stimulus no negotiations until after the November election. You know, these people need help. I don't care about the businesses and everything else at this point. At this point here, it's about the American people that are out of work. They didn't choose this, what's happened to them. They need help. They need to be able to put food on their table and keep a roof over their head. Half of them are looking to be already being evicted and everything else because some of these states, like the one I live in, Florida, you know, the governor just said, okay, well, I'm not going to sign the, 
you know, they cannot evict the order anymore. So, you know, now the evictions have started. They've started turning off power, water, and everything else. These people need help. We need to meet in the middle. It can't be all one side on one side or this side or anything like that. Let's meet in the middle and take care of these people. What is the problem? Pride. Pride is the problem. If you really cared about the American people, they'd do something. But nobody wants to put their pride to the other side. The Dow swung more than 600 points when that happened, you know? The Dow was down 1.2%, 350 points. The S&P went, went down 1.3%, and the NASDAQ went down 1.4%. He tweeted, I have instructed my representatives to stop negotiations until after the election, when immediately after I win, we will pass a majority stimulus bill fo that focuses on hardworking Americans and small business, he tweeted. The president also added in a tweet, our ec economy is doing very well. The stock market is at a record level. Jobs and employment are also coming back in record numbers. <clears throat> so I, the biggest question is here, okay, if, if we really read into this is, okay, but you can comment below. Uh, my question on this whole thing right here is, Okay, so if he's not reelected and they don't do a stimulus package now and he's not reelected, does that mean that he's just going to say kind of like, you know, no, oh, so sad, too bad. You have to wait for the next president to take care of it. Sit back, throw his feet up on the desk and let Joe Biden take care of it. Is that what this is saying? Because if he doesn't win, what happens then? So if he doesn't win, it could be springtime before people actually start getting help. It's all about pride. Nobody wants to diverse against their pride. I don't know. The Fed. The Fed is, uh, you know, he's the second wave of coronaviruses could more significantly limit the economic activity, not to mention the tragic effects on lives and well-being. Managing this risk as the expansion continues, we require the following medical experts' guidance, including using masks and social distancing. Yes, I just said that the president's uh, head of the feds there, and that would be um, Mr. Powell. He did say that we need to follow what the medical experts are saying, their guidance, including using masks and social distancing measures. I don't know what the big deal is. It just seems like everybody keeps saying this. If we do it, we probably get out of this hole. In addition to gaining control of the pandemic, Powell reinstates his calls for more fiscal stimulus aid as supporting Americans' value. Stimulus negotiations have been in a gridlock for months, he said. Yet Powell said on Tuesday that the risk of Congress pouring too much money, stimulus money into the economy are far lower than the risks of not doing enough. Although government spending is all adding into already a sky-high federal budget, lawmakers should act for the American people. The U.S. federal budget is on an unstable path. Has been for some time, he said. But this is not the time to give priority to those concerns. <clears throat> people need money. People need a home. People need food to eat. Oh, take a deep breath. So, once again, Donald Trump is uh, starting to, even before his, diagno his diagnosis with uh, the COVID, the president had been taking to calling the drug companies to check on their vaccine trials, asking how much longer it's going to take for them to do these things. In a nutshell. Basically, what he wants is he wants a, a vaccine that he can say that he has and it's ready to go and be put out there and everything else. And he doesn't care if it's FDA approved or not, um, because it states right in here that, you know, he's willing to override that and everything else. Um, but then again, you know, experts worry that, 
you know, Trump's undivided attention means that for the fate of the vaccine, which so much obvious political pressure coming to bear, uh, people may fear the vaccines aren't safe for widespread use. I mean, one would only think that. Beyond that, they may lose trust in the federal regulators and possibly even in research science. All right, moving across the water here. Let's go somewhere else. London. I'm sure we all wish we could. In London, the, the wealth of the world's billionaires reached a new record high in the middle of a pandemic as a rebound in tech stocks boosted the fortunes of the global elite. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Billionaire wealth increased to $10.2 trillion at the end of July, up from the previous peak of $8.9 trillion in 2017. According to the report from the Swiss bank, you notice it's a Swiss bank, it's not an American bank because they don't keep their money here. They keep it all overseas where the Americans can't find it. The total number of billionaires has increased by 31 to 2,189 since 2017. And ask yourselves, who has the money? And who gets the tax break? It ain't us. Oh, yeah, we might get this little dinky thing. But, I mean, come on. You put on 31 billionaires. And they're all up to over $10.2 trillion. <laughs> oh, that's just chump change. Let, let, let me get that out of the drawer for you. I'll write a pie. Oh, speaking of pie. Everybody might want to get a tissue. It's a sad day. It's another business that's changing the name. Eskimo Pie has decided on a new name three months after it acknowledged its original name was offensive toward native Arctic communities. Beginning early in 2021, the chocolate-covered vanilla ice cream bar will be called Eddie's Pie. A nod to one of the company's co-founders, Joseph Eddie. It's also a familiar name to many because it, it, its makers because it's a... Um, brand of ice cream that's in the markets and it's marketed under the 80s name on the east coast all right on thursday you know we had um we had some really interesting stuff going on, on thursday and it seems like um the closer we get to november 3rd uh, the more of this i think we might see but i don't know 13 with ties to the right-wing militia groups charged in plots to kidnap Michigan governor and target police, and they were also looking to disrupt other governments in the surrounding areas. Just what we need. Republicans were baffled on Thursday by the House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, suggesting that she might introduce a bill allowing a body appointed by Congress to invoke the 25th Amendment to remove President Trump from office as he recovers from the novel coronavirus. In case you don't know, the 25th Amendment allows for the vice president to become acting president if it is determined that the president is unable to discharge the powers and duties of his office. Currently, the vice president and cabinet can invoke and that amendment. So if they feel that he is going, as Donald Jr. said, batshit crazy, um, they can kind of take this away from him until he recovers from whatever it is he might have contracted. Might have been one of those drugs they give him. On Friday, President Donald Trump has signed off on a roughly $1.8 trillion stimulus offer to be presented to House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, according to two people with knowledge of the decision. Making the highest top-line dollar figure that the administration has put on the table to this point. Well, we went from $600 billion is what they, the Republicans first said that that's the highest they'd go. And the Democrats wanted 2.2 that they already passed in the uh, Congress. And then we went to Donald Trump this week where he said he wasn't going to negotiate anymore and put a stop to it. Oh, and then the stock market went down. So then he changed his mind and said that he wanted a $1,200 check cut to everybody. And now we're up to, um, he wants uh, $1.8 trillion in stimulus relief. (sighs) 
New York is facing the biggest threat of the coronavirus, you know, resurging since the pandemic started in the spring. It's all starting in Brooklyn and parts of New York. Um, basically, it's in these uh, large Orthodox Jew populations around the, the Queens, Midwood, Borough Park, you know, the Southern Bronx or in Brooklyn. Um, you know, it's, I understand people, you know, they, you want to be able to do things and you feel you have the, the right to, you know, go to church, which, you know, I agree with. And, uh, you know, you, you know, not everybody can do everything that they need to do. You know, I mean, it's, we're in a pandemic. It's not like everybody's trying to take away everybody's rights. I don't understand that. It's like everybody's walking around with these blinders on and that's what they think. Everybody's trying to take away their rights. And it's like, if we just put our mask on and do a little bit of social distancing, um, we probably could get through this a lot faster than what it's going to be. Because trust me, people, if we keep going on the road we're going on right now, it's going to take a very, very long time to get somewhat back to normal. Russia, Russia, they just recorded more than 12,000 new cases on Friday, marking the highest one-day account since the onset of the pandemic. The country's coronavirus headquarters reported 12,126 new cases Friday, bringing the total to more than 1.27 million. Officials also reported 201 deaths, bringing Russia's death toll to 22,250. Now, a little bit of weather news before we start wrapping this up. And once again, Louisiana is in the bullseye. Uh, this storm Delta is looking to hit about 15 miles just from where the last one went in. You know, if you wanted to go through a hurricane, want to know if you wanted to feel the experience and everything else, you should have been in Louisiana this year because they have been hit and hit and hit and hit. It'll be, when this one makes landfall, it'll be six storms this hurricane season. Bullseye. If I lived there, Alaska looks really good. On this day in 1936, the Boulder Dam, or better known as the Hoover Dam, began generating electricity for Los Angeles. Today, this dam produces electricity for 1.3 million people each year. And it's still standing because we knew how to build things back in the day. So this has been... Survival Preparedness for Beginners. This is your week in review and news. If you do have any comments, feel free to write them in. Put them down in the comment section. That's why YouTube put that there. Just put them down there. I try to make sure that I'm fair and I'm not biased to one way or the other. I try to look at things with um, some may call common sense. I hope everybody out there knows what that is. Um, if you don't, Google it. But they do give uh, college courses on that now. But as my father always said, something you can't be taught in school. It's either smacked into you when you were a kid, or you ain't going to get it. So, until next time, I'll see you all next Sunday morning, 11 a.m., for your week in review of your news, weather, and all the other things that have gone on. Survival of Preparedness for Beginners, catch you all on the flip side.